Welcome back to The Mindful Hunter. I'm your host as always, Jay Nickel. And we have a bit of a double whammy video today. So the first part of the video is gonna be my opinion and basically five reasons why I think quilts are better than sleeping bags. And then the second half of the video, I'm gonna detail my sleeping system. Now, specifically, I'm gonna go into pretty big detail about my deep winter sleep system because this is something I've been working on for multiple years to get a highly versatile, lightweight sleep system for really cold, deep winter hunts. But while I'm at it, I'm also gonna go over my three season sleep system because there's really not that much of a difference. As always, before we kick into the video, a quick note from our sponsor, who is me, Mindful Reviews. So I have built a community gear review platform, Mindful Reviews. You can go visit us at Mindful dashreviews.com. It is a membership subscription service. We have 181 members as of today. We do gear raffles. I give away monthly prizes to the lifetime members. You get to contribute and help pick the gear that I review and you even get to participate in the reviews themselves. We have a robust, super busy forum, tons of educated users who are always helping out everybody else. It's a super positive, uplifting community and I'd love you to have you come be a part of it. On that note, I just went live last week with a raffle for two one-person four-season shelters. That's the Stone Glacier Sky Solus and the Hilleberg Solo. As of this video being released, that raffle is still live. If you're interested, the link for that video is right here, and the information to participate in the raffle is in the description, or you can just go to mindful-reviews.com. All right, that's enough shameless self-promotion. Let's dive into the video. So first things first, I originally started out using traditional sleeping bags. Um, I think sleeping bags are great. If you're a diehard sleeping bag guy, I'm not here to try and you know argue with you. If that's the system that works for you, go nuts. However, I ended up going on a hunting trip with a buddy of mine who was a big hammock guy. He's actually a surfer um, and he does a lot of ha hammock camping on surfing trips. And he was the first guy who introduced me to the concept of a quilt. So typically in the hammock world, you don't use sleeping pads. So you use a top quilt and a bottom quilt instead. And you actually have a quilt that wraps around the bottom of the hammock, not between you and the hammock, but on the underside of the hammock itself. And that way your body doesn't crush the quilt and kind of negate the insulative properties of whatever material is in that quilt down synthetic etc now we're going to get into that in a little bit more in a minute now there's a lot of reasons why hammocks aren't practical for hunting but once i ran the quilt in the hammock i was like now this i can adapt to a hunting situation and i think reap a lot of the benefits of the quilt system without having to face the drawbacks of the hammock system. And instead of running that under quilt, you rely on your sleeping pad to provide the insulation from the ground up. Now, there's one main factor here that underlies the reason why we can get away with a quilt. And I was kind of alluding to it earlier when I talked about compressing the insulation. So most people feel I don't wanna not run a sleeping bag because I'm not gonna have insulation under my body. Here's the fact of the matter. When you compress that insulation, it doesn't actually provide that much R value. You need loft in your insulation, whether it be down or synthetic. And if there's no loft, you don't have air pockets and you don't have the ability to trap heat and then insulate or provide an R value underneath you. So one of my primary reasons is that I think it's more of a psychological block than anything because even though you think your sleeping bag is keeping you warm on your back, it's not. Now, it does wrap around further. And I think, you know, a lot of people do complain about drafts and stuff, and I'm gonna get into that in a minute. I think that is a valid concern. But the actual insulation along your back from the ground up, unless you are in like a zero degree bag that has an unbelievable amount of insulation, the vast majority of sleeping bags are not providing very much insulation along your back once you crush it down flat. And it really is still the sleeping pad that's providing you the majority of that R value and the majority of that insulation. Now let's dive into the five reasons why I believe quilts are superior to sleeping bags. Now, as I was just discussing, because you don't need any material along your back, 
you can shave off close to 30% of the sleeping bag itself by just getting rid of material that wasn't providing you any insulation anyways. Like just conjure up the mental image of a sleeping bag and then cut a big V down out of the back. Now this is a good moment to talk about different types of quilts. Now when I say quilt, most people think of just a rectangular blanket. I tend to prefer quilts, and I'm gonna get into this specific model here, the Enigma by Enlightened Equipment, that have a foot box. So they do have like, let's say the bottom 18 to 20 inches is sewn up along the bottom and it's a bit of like a little mummy bag that you stick your feet into. So it's not just a wide open blanket that's laying on top of you. So it's not like you save 50% of the weight by shaving off the entire bottom, but you cut out a really big V along the bottom of material you don't need anymore. So not only does that decrease the weight of the sleeping bag, into quilt form. It also decreases the packed size because you don't have as much material to compress. Also, you don't typically have zippers on quilts. Now, some there's some hybrid versions that do incorporate a zipper, but most of the ones I recommend don't. And the weight of a zipper can, can really add up. So the decreased weight and the decreased packable size is a major reason why I think quilts are superior to sleeping bags. So the next reason on my list is price. Now, because of the reduced manufacturing complexity and the reduction in materials, you normally find a pretty drastic reduction in price when you're comparing similar specced out sleeping bags versus quilts. So if you take products of approximately the same material and same temperature rating from manufacturers of approximately the same quality, you're gonna find that in general, quilts are cheaper than sleeping bags. So the third reason on my list is temperature management. By their nature, because quilts don't like sew up and close all the way or just only have a single side opening, they're much easier to use to moderate your temperature. So you can use, and I'm gonna get into this later, that I actually only have one temperature quilt that I use for three season and four season circumstances. And I'm gonna tell you about the things that I do in different seasons to make it warmer in the winter and cooler in the fall and summer. But there's a lot of options you have with a quilt in order to reduce the temperature if it's really hot camping or increase the temperature if it's really cold camping. And I think they offer a lot more versatility in that regard than sleeping bags do. I think you're a little more locked into a temperature range with a sleeping bag than you are with a quilt. Now, the fourth reason on my list is versatility. Now, this doesn't just refer to temperature management, but also just general use cases. The nice thing about not having a bottom is that, for instance, you can use it for glassing incredibly easily. And I'm gonna go over the specs that I have mine built with, but I actually increased the outer shell to a 20D and this gives it kind of like a, a more robust, less likely to rip outer shell. So I sit in mind to glass all the time. You can pull it out of your tent and wrap it around you to have coffee in the morning. And just the fact that there's no back on it, you can sit down. You don't have to worry about sitting on your sleeping bag and, and ripping it on rocks. You can put your, um, I carry a little Thermarest fold out, one of those thin, closed cell foam kind of glassing pads and you can lay that down on the ground and kind of lean back on a rock or build yourself a little chair in the snow depending on the season and then just lay your quilt on top of you and sit there in glass or do whatever it is you're going to do and you don't have to worry about wrapping yourself up completely in the, the kind of sleeping bag and, and closing it and all, and all the rest of it. So um, I really do believe quilts are just a more versatile piece of gear than a sleeping bag in general. So the final reason on my list is very personal and could be the most polarizing one because this is what I hear the most complaints about of people who, who use quilts. I firmly believe that quilts are far more comfortable. Now I'm a somewhat broad framed guy and it's very difficult for me to find a sleeping bag that doesn't feel claustrophobic. I also tend to be a side sleeper. And most bags, you kind of get in flat, zip them up the side, and by the time I turn over onto my side, it gets all wrapped and twisted on me. And I feel very constricted in the middle of the night. And then you gotta take a leak and you can't find the zipper and like you're pulling at stuff and it's driving you crazy. 
The great thing about a quilt is that because it wraps around you, and we'll go over the kind of bands and straps that you use to close it, I find when I roll around inside the quilt, the quilt just stays strapped to the sleeping pad. It stays in its one position and I move around inside the quilt. And again, going back to that temperature uh, management issue, you can it's so easy to flip up a corner. There's kind of two closures on the back, one mid body and one right behind the neck. In moderately cold temperatures, I don't do up the one behind the neck and I kind of get some airflow in the upper back that kind of moderates temperature um, and leaves things a little more kind of loosey goosey and comfortable. And then when stuff gets real cold, I close that last one and I can still twist around inside and I find the quilt just naturally conforms to my body a lot more. I really do believe that the vast majority of people who don't who haven't had good experiences with quilts, it really boils down to not setting them up properly and then not operating them properly throughout the night. I will say running a quilt is more finicky than a sleeping bag. As long as you roll your sleeping bag out on top of your sleeping pad, climb in and do the zipper up, you can't really screw it up. If you don't take the time to attach your, your quilt to your sleeping bag appropriately, and then close that quilt around you appropriately when you get in, especially in chillier temperatures, it's not gonna function the way it was designed to and you are gonna have a poor experience. Now I'm gonna spend some time on that and I'm gonna show you on video how I like to set my quilt up. But let's just run through these from the very top. So five reasons why I think quilts are superior. They're lighter and smaller. They tend to be cheaper. They're superior at managing temperature, more versatile, you can use them for glassing, you can use them around camp, and finally, they're more comfortable. I find they mold themselves to my body better and I can move around and as a side sleeper, I've always gotten a better sleep in a quilt than a sleeping bag. So for me, that's why I use quilts for everything, winter, fall, summer, all the time. So on that note, Let's get into the actual pieces of my system and why I chose the pieces that I have. All right, let's dive into the deep winter system first because that's the one that's taken me longer to build and to be honest with you, it's just a little bit more interesting. So let's start from the bottom up. So for a sleeping pad, I use the XPED Ultra 7R. This is the first time I used this pad this year. I got about 15 nights in it. I had an XPED mat previously, but it was a mummy shaped version. And I think it was the hyper light down mat winter. Um, it was okay. I have learned now through years of sleeping in the backcountry, I'm not built for mummy pads. When I see the extra three or four ounces you can save by going with a mummy pad, I completely disregard it. As a side sleeper, my knees fall off the pad all the time, my shoulders slip off, I don't like mummy pads, I want nothing to do with them. I always buy the long wide pad, which most long wide pads tend to be about 25 inches wide and 78 inches long. And being six foot one, that give me, gives me lots of room to move around on the pad. Now the Ultra 7R has an R value of seven. It has down built into the pad and it is incredibly warm. So just for context, I spent somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 nights this year below minus 25 degrees Celsius and minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have tested this system thoroughly. So we start with the pad, XPED Ultra 7R, and then we go with the quilt. So this is an Enlightened Enigma synthetic 20 degree quilt. Now I have an identical down one but anytime there's a high degree chance of precipitation or I'm in deep winter conditions, I always take a synthetic quilt. Now the reason for that is I use my sleep system as my primary drying mechanism. So I don't use fires in the winter. I don't try and dry shit out at night. I literally crawl into my quilt soaking wet. Like you could wring my clothes out. And by the time I wake up in the morning, I'm bone dry. Normally what happens is throughout the night, as I wake up to take a leak, I'll notice that the outer layers are drying first and I kind of strip off layers as they get dry, stick them in a, a dry bag, put them at the foot of the tent. And when I wake up in the morning, I've got nice dry clothes to put on and I'm still wearing my nice dry base layers. In addition to that, I have a C to Summit 
uh, Thermolite Reactor Liner. This is a key piece for deep winter. In my opinion, this adds about five to 10 degrees to your system. I've had people argue this with me, but I did some very um, concrete testing with it this year, like one night with it, one night without it, same temperatures, changed everything else. This provides a fundamental temperature difference to your system. I think it's just the way it, it just traps one more layer of air and it, it, it really adds a layer of comfort. In addition to that, I run two pillows. Now I'm a side sleeper, and if I use one backcountry pillow, the distance from the side of my head to the pillow is so far, I end up sleeping like this, I get a huge crinked neck, um, and I don't sleep well at all. So I've come up with a system where I actually Velcro two of these pillows together, changed my life. Now in full transparency, I've never actually weighed these two pillows, and for this video, I weighed these and those two pillows together weigh half a pound. And I started thinking to myself, I mean, I like my night's sleep, but a half a pound is a lot. So I think what I'm going to experiment with next is using some of my puffy layers for the base layer of the pillow and then just stick one of these on top. I think I can shave off an additional four ounces. I don't think I need a half a pound worth of pillows. I never... I think I was estimating them at two to three ounces each and I just never bothered throwing them on the scale before. So that was a little bit eye-opening. And another reason why you should put everything you own on a scale at least once, just to check any incorrect assumptions that you may have. So in addition to that, in the deep winter, what I'm really relying on is my puffy layers. Like this year for my puffy bottoms, I wore the Aerolite Blizzard system from Sitka. I literally didn't take those pants off on both my goat hunts over 20 days, not once. Walked in them, hiked in them, sledded in them, slept in them, never took them off once. Super comfortable, great to sleep in. They have full side zips, so when I started to get overheating, I could just open the side zips, evacuate some heat. It was fantastic. And then up top, I had my core lightweight base layer, and then I had an ambient hoodie, and then I also had a Kelvin Aerolite puffy jacket. So when it really got down to that minus 25 Celsius, minus 10 Fahrenheit, I was on the X-PED, inside the reactor liner, inside the quilt, with my puffy layers on. And I was snug as a bug in a rug. Most nights, I could not wear the Kelvin Aerolite jacket. It was too hot. It would just be the Sitka Ambient hoodie up top. And that was an incredibly comfortable piece to sleep in. So this entire winter system weighs 5.4 pounds. The quilt weighs in at 2.2 pounds. The sleeping pad weighs in at 2.1 pounds. The reactor liner comes in at 0.6 pounds. And as I already noted, the two pillows put together is a half a pound. So that entire sleep system, that, that's including the pad and everything else, gets me down to minus 25 Celsius, minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and only weighs 5.4 pounds. Now, just to put this in perspective, the last time I did a similar hunt two years ago, I had to take a Kafaru zero degree slick bag to even get me close to the same comfort at the same temperatures. And I believe that bag weighed 4.7 pounds just for the bag. That wasn't anything else, that wasn't pillows, that wasn't sleeping pad, that was literally nothing. So I've been able to shave over two pounds off of my system by moving to a quilt and using a liner and then just using the puffy clothes that you already have with you. And I think that's a good takeaway when we're talking about gear prep. You know, it's, it's a great idea to think like, what other uses do the things that I'm bringing have so that I'm not bringing two items that essentially accomplish the same purpose? Like I notice people gear prepping for winter hunts and they're bringing all of their puffy layers and they're bringing a zero degree bag. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense because your puffy layers are just gonna be sitting off to the side at night and you're gonna be carrying this zero degree bag that's you know an extra pound, a pound and a half when you could have got away with a lighter bag and just worn your puffy layers to bed. Now again, going back to this increased comfort of a quilt, I also find it way easier to sleep in a quilt with puffy layers because by default, 
it just has more room in there and it's a more modular system. So it feels more comfortable and less claustrophobic to me. So now let's go through the changes that I make when I'm in a three season or a summer or a fall situation. So I move from the XPED Ultra 7R down to the Big Agnes Q-Core SLX. Now that is discontinued now. So I wish I could recommend it. It's my favorite three season pad. It comes in at 1.7 pounds. So it's a half a pound lighter than this. It's a little bit heavy, but it's a four inch thick pad. It has an R value of four point something. I love the pad. Now that they don't make that, the pad that I'm seeing that has the closest specs that I'm most interested in testing next is a Sea to Summit Etherlite XT. So if you're in the market for a pad and you're looking for a high-end pad that's nice and thick, super comfortable, uh, with a reasonable weight, I think that Sea to Summit Etherlite XT is a good option to look at. I have not personally run it, but I have a couple first-hand accounts from people I trust who really recommend that pad. Now, the other switch that I'll make is obviously I don't bring the reactor liner. And like I said earlier, I have an identical Enigma quilt in down. It only weighs 22 ounces. So that is 1.4 pounds. So it's actually 0.8 pounds lighter than the similarly specced synthetic. Now these two quilts are identical. Same digi camo pattern, same 20D external shell, same temperature rating of 20 degrees. I got down 850 fill in one and uh, the synthetic fill in this one. Now, the other thing to note here that I didn't mention before is I can pack this down significantly smaller. I have a legitimate compression dry bag that I can get this down about 30% smaller. But the other major benefit of the down quilt is that it packs up to about the size of a Nalgene. It's crazy small. So there's really no touching that down quilt for lightweight, small footprint option. However, I have had particularly wet hunts before and it will do, it will keep you alive and it will do an okay job of like moderately drying you out, but you're still gonna wake up a little clammy in the morning. Like clothes are gonna be a little damp and sticky and it, it doesn't get you the crispy bone dry that the synthetic does. Now, I'm not going to go into a really deep tangent here, but there is some really interesting potentials of taking a down quilt and putting it inside a hyper thin synthetic shell in order for, you know, um, for vapor evacuation. And it's a really interesting principle that I haven't tested yet, but I don't want people to hit me up and say, hey, you could do this. Yes, you could. I haven't had an opportunity to experiment with that yet. And it requires like some really expensive shells and finding somebody who's going to make you like a hyper light 50 degree synthetic quilt. Now let's look at the weight. So my entire summer system comes in at 3.6 pounds because it's the 1.7 pounds for the pad, the 1.4 pounds for the down quilt and the 0.5 pounds for the pillows. And like I say, I think I'm going to be able to shave, you know, four ounces off that system this year. So while my winter system comes in at 5.4 pounds, my summer system comes in at 3.6 pounds. And to give you an idea, I'm going to be running the Argali Awahi one person trekking pole shelter with liner, which I believe weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of two pounds for sheep this year. So my entire sleep system is gonna weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 5.6 pounds. That's tent, liner, pad, bag, pillows, don't need a ground sheet, nothing. So um, I'm incredibly happy with that. I mean, I've taken five pound tents. That doesn't even account for your sleep system. So be able to get my tent and my entire sleep system into such a compact package at lightweight, I'm super excited for that. Okay. So there's the two systems that I use, my three season system and my four season system. There's the weights of everything. That's why I think, you know, um, quilts are superior to sleeping bags. But now let's go take a look at some of the technical issues that I think people have when utilizing quilts and what may be getting in the way of you having a positive quilt experience. And you know, you go at once, you have a crap experience and you go back to your sleeping pad. So let's 
I'm gonna kick over to some, to some different footage that I took. We're gonna set everything up. I'm gonna show you how I set my gear up. I'm gonna show you how I get into it in different circumstances and how I close it and, and all the rest. So let's hop over and take a look at that now. All right, so I got my sleeping pad and my pillow inflated and now I'm gonna show you how I use the quilt. So again, this is the Enlightened Enigma quilt, synthetic, uh, 20 degree. I get it custom order because I like to pick my own colors. I specifically get the digi camo because that way I can use it when I'm glassing and it's not like I'm wearing some you know bright purple flag or something sitting up on top of the hill. Um, and then I put black on the inside because I figure it will reflect heat a little bit better and, and keep more heat in the bag. So you're going to notice right away on the back you have three attachment points. You have two elastic straps, one near the base, one about three quarters of the way to the top, and then you have two kind of snap buttons that have matching snaps over on the far side. Okay, so first things first, and I normally do this outside of the tent. I blow up my sleeping pad, and then I line up the bottom of my quilt with the bottom of the sleeping pad. And then I come up to where the first strap is. There's a clip right here. I clip that in. And you, you want it snug, but you don't want it to be like stretching the bag or anything like that. Like just snug so it doesn't slide around. Now, if I'm in three season conditions, this is literally all I do. I climb into the bag like this. I sleep in it. I literally just drape this over me. If I get a little cold in the middle of the night, I might, you know, tuck one of these underneath, but that's literally all I do. Now, the next step up when things start to get colder, I'm gonna explain this first, then I'll get in the quilt and show it. I will get inside the quilt and then as I will sit up and I will do the second strap up around behind my back and cinch it tight. And what that does is it then keeps the quilt tucked in under my sides and stops the drafts from getting in. Now that's good for like most of your late fall, early October type of hunts. Once you start getting into November, December, especially January and February, then you have to do up the ones behind the head. And so you see you have this, this is why I made those temperature management um, comments earlier. Like you have such a sophisticated system of dictating how much heat you want this thing to retain. So let me hop in here and I'll show you the different um, setups that I use. So I crawl in, I always kind of sit up and I pull, kind of sit up and I pull my feet to the end of the quilt and then what I'll do is just kind of do a bit of a shimmy down and then that puts me, the, the, the heels of my feet right at the, the bottom of the pad. And then so for three season conditions, this is literally all I do, if I get hot, I can kind of open this up a little bit. I'm free to roll around, sleep on my side. I normally sleep with my arms outside the bag. Now, when it starts getting colder, you get in, you sit up. I cinch this one down as tight as it will go. You feed this around your back. You clip it to here. Now, depending on the size of your body and how wide you are is gonna dictate how tight you need this strap. I like it pretty tight. I also use a wide bag, so I've got a lot of extra material here. And then all I do is I lay back down, and then what that strap has done is it keeps it the bag pulled in under my body. So now, all the way up until this just like top portion here, is 100% like a sleeping bag. It's locked right in under my body, no drafts are getting in. So again, up until like mid-October, depending on temperatures, even into November, this is how I run my quilt. If I get a little cold at night, I just kind of come in under here. 
um, and I might tuck it in under my shoulders. Now, finally, when we're talking deep winter hunts, that's when you use these final two. And I rarely have to use both. I normally just use this top one. And I'll be honest, it's a little finicky, like it's a little bit weird to get into it first. But what I do is I put my hands inside, I grab this one here, grab this one inside, I will close these together, and then I pop my head through. There's a drawstring right here. I pull the drawstring tight, and then boom. You are literally locked in all the way up to your neck. Now, I typically sleep with a beanie or a toque on, depending on if you live in the States um, or Canada, or if it's winter and I've got my ambient hoodie or something on, lots of times the hood from whatever insulation layer I've got on will be plenty enough to keep my head warm. But you do need to consider head warmth because there's no built-in hood to this particular quilt. Already, I am starting to sweat my bag off inside here. Like this gets super hot as soon as you close up those top two layers. Like I, that surprised even me. I can't believe how fast that got hot. So again, from the top, and then you just pop this open. Second one comes here. And then the third one you just leave on your sleeping pad at all times. So three season, kind of late three season, and then four season version. If you've gone to this extent and a quilt is still not for you, that's fine. I, I, I totally get it. It's not for everybody. But the vast majority of people that I've talked to that had a poor quilt experience did not take the time to make sure that these were the right length, that they were snapped closed correctly, that it was the right size quilt that it was tucked underneath. And I really do believe that if you take the time to set the system up appropriately, you're really going to notice this. This is an incredibly versatile system. So I hope that was helpful. Any extra like setup questions you got for me, just let me know. All right. So there you have it. That's my system. That's how I use it. This was one of those things that I have literally had hundreds of messages about over the last six to 12 months, just from different hunts and everybody, especially with the quilts, everybody's always super curious kind of what my setup is and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to do this video to give people a real clear picture of what I run and why. And maybe the last thing I'll close out on is if, if, if like I say, if budget was an issue, you could literally run just the synthetic bag, you don't need to have a, a, a down. I think that's a bit of a luxury, not a necessity. I do think it's more important to have the security of the synthetic. And then you're not limited into where you could go. You could easily get away with just one of these pads. And unless you're going to be in like minus 20 Celsius, minus 5 to 10 Fahrenheit, I think you can even get away without the reactor liner. And I think you can build a complete system for somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 bucks that you could literally use 12 months out of the year just by changing the base layers and the puffy layers that you wear to bed. So it's incredibly versatile, reasonably affordable, um, and solves a whole lot of problems. And I think it's a, it's a bomb proof system. I've, I've been testing and perfecting this system for multiple years in a row now. And I feel like it sucks because I have this review channel and it's like, I always got to go out and testing stuff. But if I wasn't making videos, like I'm done, there would be no other testing. I wouldn't even bother trying anything else because this system works so perfect for me and my needs. And it comes in at such a, a reasonable cost that I really feel no need to look elsewhere. But I know there's always new products that people are curious about. So I will continue to test and likely going to buy a new sleeping pad for this summer just because it kills me that I use a sleeping pad that I can't recommend to people because you can't buy it anymore. And why Big Agnes discontinued the Q-Core SLX and in their new line of pads, they don't really have an analogous pad with a similar thickness and R rating and weight. It's really odd. I don't understand it because it was such a popular pad. But as always, if you could like, comment, share, subscribe, anything to boost the algorithm and help get this out to as many people as possible, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, 
the raffle for the Stone Glacier Sky Solace one-person tent and the Hilleberg Solo one-person tent is still live as of the day this video's coming out. So you can go to my review platform, mindful-reviews.com, um, and it, there will be information there whether or not the raffle is still live. If it's still live, you can join the community, buy raffle tickets. I would greatly appreciate the support. And until next time, thanks for tuning in.